Aloha, everyone. Welcome. We'll continue our exploration of what I've been calling the heart breath, finding this inner spaciousness, and then letting that sensation um, take over the physical body as well as we find spaciousness in our shoulders. Um, so let's take a moment to explore this theme from seated. You can sit in any comfortable seated position. I have a blanket underneath me, um, so grab whatever you need. You can kneel or sit cross-legged. Um, in today's class, you'll definitely need a strap and a blanket. You may need a couple of blocks, so feel free to take a moment to grab all those things and then um, place your strap in front of you, how you might remember we used it last week. And before we begin, find your seat and start to scan the body. Notice the sensation of the legs and whether the body feels heavy or feels supported the positioning of the hips and low back. Notice your rib cage. And as you breathe, perhaps you have more to notice within the rib cage. Try to feel not just the front of the breath, but the sides and the back, the top and the bottom. Breathe through your nose if you can. And then as you breathe, as the rib cage expands and contracts, begin to notice the sensation of the shoulder girdle resting atop the rib cage. And sometimes our shoulder girdle is positioned slightly forward and our shoulders kind of hunch up and round. Sometimes it's positioned back and our low back arches a lot and we feel a lot of tension between our shoulders. So notice if you feel space in the front and the back and both tightness in the front and the back, both. And then start to bring your awareness to the heart center. And we'll take some of our heart breaths that we practiced last week. So on the inhale, as the physical body expands, feel that same expansion in the center point of the chest. And it's more of an allowing and an observing. There's no need to change anything or push harder. And so the inhale brings the spaciousness to physical body and heart center. And then the exhale And so then on your exhale, there may be the temptation to follow the breath out. See if you can instead allow that relaxing feeling to help you sink deeper and deeper into the focal point of the heart while still remaining spacious. We'll take a few breaths like this so the inhale expands the heart center and the exhale you stay expansive letting the focus hone in to the smaller and smaller and smaller center point of the heart and we'll call this the heart breath so throughout class I'll give us all some reminders to breathe in this way and just take a couple more to 
Let the practice sink in and become more familiar. And then just for fun, before we begin moving, um, let's test the range of motion in our neck. Just look over to the right and you can use your hand to center on your chin to notice how far on your collarbones your chin is without any strain of course and then go the other way and, and just notice how far you can go and then as you turn from left to right notice the sensations does it feel smooth does it feel tight and take a little snapshot of this so we can compare at the end of our class come back to center um, and then continu continuing to set up our theme, grab your strap. If you're kneeling, I like to grab um, roughly where my knees are, so slightly wider than the shoulders. Um, can you make sure Pujari has a strap? Thanks. Um, and then line your knuckles up with your wrist. So I find there's a tendency for the knuckles to kind of bow in. See if you can make a straight line. Um, and if you can't, it might mean you need to separate your hands more. So play with that for a moment. Make sure you can see the angle of the wrist and then the angle of the knuckles and have awareness on the inside and outside of the hand. Oh good, yawns mean parasympathetic state is being <laughs> activated. <laughs> and then once you find that, be really gentle. Actually, just set your hands down. Because we're doing a lot with the shoulders today, everything that I cue should just be like one to 5%, right? You don't want to feel like, rawr, I'm so strong, even though you are, you're so strong. Um, because then the arms are going to get tired and the more superficial muscles are going to turn on. So practicing this just like really gentle, pulling action, pull the hands away and see if you can feel the muscles on the outside of the arms that engage. Do you feel that? It's the triceps and actually through the superficial back arm line, the triceps connect into the lats. So you might even feel that big triangle shaped muscle that goes into the low back, helping you to sit a little taller. And then staying really, really relaxed. Play with ever so gently I want to feel if it's an exhale or an inhale. Let's inhale to pull the hands apart and then exhale to very slowly almost imagine like this anti-gravity effect where the hands are just floating but there's no strain in the arms and shoulders and if you ever feel like you're working hard or there's tension just stop where you are and l don't worry about lifting the hands any higher and pause and take your your inhale to pull the hands and become spacious then as you exhale allow the arms to float if it feels hard try taking the arms a little wider and try to imagine um, this triangle from the tip of the finger down to the base of the low back so behind you here but um, I'm showing you on the front of my body take a few of these lifts and lowers trying to feel how the arms are connected to that low back space. And if you can't feel, it means you're probably using more of the tops of the shoulders to lift. And so try pulling a little bit more through the hands, breathing, relaxing. And the next time the arms are up, pause and take a heart breath. And try to feel that sense of spaciousness from the heart permeate the layers of your physical body as well. So if there's any tension in the shoulders, it releases. Then you find a spaciousness. And then gently release the strap back down. Place it over to the side so it's not in the way as you lay down and move any props out of the way. We'll turn to the right and slowly begin to recline. And before we recline, actually this is a great moment here, paw the hands out, shifting the weight from hand to hand and favor the pinky side of the hand. Um, sure, if you're, pl if you're playing the music, you can hit play on the first track and um, bend your elbows towards you like come up and bring your elbows in and then bring the pinky side of the hand down. And see if you can feel that same pathway from the outside of the arms down to that mid back point. And then let that space 
Start to lengthen out so you can recline, but you're still supported by the back side of the arms, the back side of the shoulders. Ah, and then you eventually make it to the earth. The legs can do whatever's comfortable. My knees are bent, my feet are wider than my hips, and I'm knocking my legs in. That's my my favorite resting position, but whatever feels comfortable for you. And now notice if there's any warmth on that space from the pinkies up to the elbows, up to the backs of the shoulders, and from those shoulder points down to the low back, the thoraco, lumbar, fascia, between the biggest vertebra at the bottom and the vertebra in our rib cage. And visualize that triangle from that low back space up and out to the shoulders. Let everything get soft and relaxed. And take a couple of heart breaths through the nose, lying down now. See if you can feel the back of the heart here. And then bring the fingertips to the hip points, elbows wide. And let's start with some pelvic tilt. So if your legs aren't already bent, take a moment for a bridge setup where the feet walk in about hips distance apart. And then the pelvis is going to tip forward and back. So it's symmetrical, rocking towards the sits bones and then towards the top of the ilium. And start to notice the muscles that are supporting the spine and what gently and effortlessly engages. Mm, start to feel the ripple up the spine, right? So as the pelvis shifts, the curves of the spine start to adapt. You might notice the arch in the low back flattening and increasing. See if you can feel what happens further up, all the way up to the base of the skull. Let the head gently nod yes. And I, I'm starting to crave um, more space through my cervical vertebra. So if you feel that, you can tuck the chin a little bit and reach the base of the skull, the occiput, further from the tailbone. Let these rocks get slower. This means you actually have to be stronger, right? Slow movements take a lot more strength and awareness. Also, let the movements become smaller. And I think these small movements take more core strength, more patience, more ability to articulate in a fine-tuned way. And I invite you to notice if the slower and the smaller awakens a deeper awareness. Almost like the awareness that usually exists behind the eyes can start to exist through the whole body. As the pelvis hovers around that neutral point, notice what I call a brightness in the deep core. So it's not like the exertion of a crunch. It's just a feeling of the body being alive and alert. Start to hold the pelvis neutral and breathe three-dimensionally into the front and the back of the belly. And notice how the breath is slightly restricted because of the core musculature that's gently engaging to hold your pelvis at neutral. And we'll do my favorite core exercise. Hover the shins parallel to the earth. Keep the low back um, and pelvis neutral as it is. And then use your exhale to tap one toe down. 
and notice if there's that tendency the inhale brings the shin back up you can continue as I talk exhaling to bring one toe down notice how the pelvis wants to rock forward and how the deep core has to work to hold the pelvis in place and once you have that tactile feedback increase the benefits of this by interlacing the hands behind the ears so that the chest opens it makes it slightly harder and you might have a little more awareness through what the rest of the spine is doing even though this is for the deep core and the lats are a very big superficial muscle can have a little awareness of that big triangle that we've been talking about from the backs of the shoulders down to the mid back and you can imagine that big triangle flattening and pressing down into the mat getting wider And the next time one foot comes down, bring the other foot down, walk the feet nice and wide, bring the arms to a T. And then keeping that neutral pelvis, start to very slowly windshield wiper the knees and notice how they can't go very far when the pelvis is neutral. Perhaps you can have a little more awareness of the hip sockets. Try moving much slower here, good. And with the deep core on and the pelvis unmoving, perhaps you can even feel how as one leg internally rotates, the sensation that travels up to the rib cage, as the core musculature activates around the center of the body, maybe all the way up to the shoulders. And even as you're moving, see if you can take a heart breath and feel that possibility of spaciousness simultaneous to relaxing and next time the knees start to go over to the left reach the left arm overhead so you can roll all the way on to the left side bring your right hand in front of you and take a moment to adjust the body so you feel supported here whatever feels best with the bottom arm and the angle of the legs and now let's massage that pathway from the left pinky outside of the left arm all the way down not quite to the low back but um, to the side of the low back maybe you can visualize that triangle and notice here how the left arm is overhead and this is totally relaxed right so even though you're not working to lift this arm later in our class as we lift our arms overhead imagine you could have the same sensation of the arm lifting overhead and being so relaxed Is that and we're taking a lot of extra time this is a really fun opportunity to to massage the rib cage and to actually feel where the lats um, start to cross over the ribs you can get a little bit of shearing between that big muscle and the much smaller intercostal muscles that are between each of the ribs and if you find a place that's a little bit tender you can um, move your body a little bit to put some extra pressure there to massage or not it can be very relaxed and gentle and then slowly start to push in the front hand and walk the back hand in so that you can come up to this side saddle seat and paw out the hands just walking them forward a little bit you can almost imagine like you're at the beach and you're just exploring the texture of the sand but instead because we're not at the beach you're exploring the texture of your own body you're exploring the sensation not of what's outside of you but what's inside of you favor the pinky side of the hands good your hands look really soft and natural and gentle and just make sure there's no pressure in the shoulders when you do this I like kind of tucking my arms in a little bit and sitting a little higher up if it's too much pressure 
And then kick the legs forward and let's take a pause in Dandasana and bring your awareness to the left side of your body. I, I actually like feel like the left side of my body is huge compared to the right side of my body right now because there's just so much more sensory feedback. Just notice any sense of space. Take a heart breath. And just for fun, because we've done so much through the left side of the body, t grab your strap and take one of these arm lifts and see how the right and left sides compare. And see if you can feel the spaciousness through the left shoulder and how the lats, that big triangle muscle that I keep talking about, are helping to support the arms so that the upper deltoids don't have to do the work. So relax down here, all the way down. <laughs> and then push the arms forward and try to feel, yeah. And then just let them glide up and don't lift very high. Yeah, maybe just pause right there for now. And then re release the arms down, I'm just curious Give me a little wave if you felt a difference between right and left sides. Cool. All right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Tim did a very little wave. Um, okay. So now place your strap over to the side. If you need to move your props again, you can. Tuck your legs into the left side and start to paw your hands down. Feed the right arm through. If you need to scoot down on your mat, you can. And then very slowly start to melt and massage the back of the body coming into a big sloppy shavasana and if the arms are naturally overhead just again take a moment to feel how relaxed the arms are here how there's no effort right the mind's not telling them where to go and just imagine um, you're upright with your arms in this position maybe even holding like something really big and heavy like sometimes i carry the surfboard overhead like this um, and that you could do it with just as much relaxation as you have right now and just take a couple of breaths and just make sure you feel comfortable make any adjustments so you can release all tension in the body and in the mind And then reach the hands down towards the heels, bend the knees, walking the soles of the feet in towards the glutes and take your pelvic tilt slow and small and find that neutral and hold it and breathe. Try to feel the back of the body spreading out almost like how I imagine a flying squirrel's back feels when they're like catching the wind floating down and then float the shins just like you did before staying neutral with the pelvis you can bring the fingertips behind the occiput and this time if it feels like the body's ready for it you can play with tapping the toe a little further forward and notice if the body's craving it or if the mind says like, oh, I need to push it more. And if it's coming from the mind, try to release that urge and be okay keeping it simple. Be okay just exploring the deep core in the kindest, most compassionate way possible. Nice, slow movements, everybody. And then the next time the legs come up, flex the feet interlace the hands and then flip the hands away from the top of the head bend the elbows bend the knees take a moment to wiggle around so that the shoulders feel comfortable here take a couple of breaths and then eventually as you feel ready you'll exhale and you'll extend through the heels and press through the hands at the same time and then inhale to soften everything and exhale for the kick and the reach and start to feel how the kicking and the reaching of the arms are related. And maybe there's a little extra awareness at that low back that unites the legs and unites the upper body. 
Maybe you can feel this outstretching nature of the whole back of the body. The next time you extend, pause there and then imagine you're in downward facing dog. Bend the knees a little bit, release the hands and push into an invisible floor over your head and kick and push at the same time and feel how the whole back of the body lengthens. We'll be playing with down dog later and um, I want you to search for a similar experience of kicking and reaching out. And so for down dog, the legs, the feet are slightly forward of the hips, right? And then bend the knees, wrap the arms around the shins and try to squeeze the legs in enough that you can massage through the middle of the back. I have a low center of gravity, so to massage in the upper part of the back, I have to really squeeze my legs higher up if you want to try to get there as well. And then reach the arms um, towards the front corners of the mat, flatten the hands down, and start to draw some big circles with the feet. And notice the sensation in the hips here. The more the legs are extended, the more the core is going to work. Make sure there's no strain. And use this movement to try to explore more of the core, right? So the more the feet go overhead, the more the upper core is going to engage. The more the feet reach low, the more you're going to feel the low core. And then from side to side, you'll feel the lateral aspect of the core. And let it be a combination between strengthening and massaging, right? So it's not just one, it's not just the other. Make sure the hip flexors are soft here. If they're not, bend the knees a little bit, pause, breathe, and try to do this in a more relaxed way. If the hip flexors are engaged, it means it's not really the core doing the work. Right, it means the more superficial muscles are trying to carry the load. Then bring the soles of the feet back to the earth. If you want a little stillness, just stay here and breathe. We'll eventually roll onto the right side for that right side body massage. Could also do some windshield wipers first like you did on the first side. And once you've explored what you want to explore, let that right arm lift and rock onto the right side for the second side body massage. And then first feel that pathway from the pinky down the outer aspect of the arm, the back of the shoulder all the way down into the mid back. Breathe into that mid to lower back. Can massage the rib cage a little extra here and that's also gonna massage the lateral edges of the lats. Let the body be relaxed. Let the breath be natural. And then start to push into the front hand. Walk the back hand in. And take a moment just to explore the hands and the shoulders, trying to feel more of what's happening in the back of the arms and the back body. And if it's ever too much, just walk the hands closer into the body so there's not so much weight in them. Make sure you're breathing. And then kick the legs out and pause in Dundasana. I'm not going to have you lift the arms again just to sort of save your arm juice, but feel now through both sides of the body and notice how your awareness has expanded.
and then start to lean back over to the right tuck the knees in and we'll be coming into tabletop i invite you to grab your blanket and place it underneath the knees here for a little extra cushioning and then paw the hands around imagine you've never done tabletop before and this is all totally new paw the hands underneath the shoulders let the fingertips be really soft little bend in the elbow and then walk the hands forward a few hand prints tuck the toes and as you start to push into the hands reach the sits bones up and back we're not going to lift the knees just yet try to feel how the pushing in the hands lengthens the lat so lengthens that triangle from the corner of the shoulders down to the low back and then flatten the tops of the feet push into the shins to gently roll forward through cat pose and then once the shoulders make it over the wrists um, pull the hands back and wide this is actually shortening the lats as you pull the heart gently through for an extended cow and we'll take a few of these so tuck the toes push into the hands think of this like a mini down dog where you're really pushing into the hands to lift the hips try to find your neutral spine i like to push my hands forward here and maybe even wide towards the corners of the mat and see if you can feel that triangle from the pinky side to the low back and then slowly start to roll forward i like to flatten my feet you don't have to if it's annoying to keep flipping the feet um, round really slowly through the spine feeling that triangle lengthen once the shoulders make it over the wrists pull the hands back and wide to lengthen the front of the body exalted cow and then as you continue to play here try moving slower try thinking about massaging this muscle so as you're rounding it's lengthening you're waving through the whole space of it and then as it starts to shorten try to favor opening the chest and let the belly and low back be really soft you can even wag your tail a little bit to make sure you're not arching in the lumbar and then when it's time to take a rest, pause with the forehead down, palms face up, let everything go. And then instead of rolling forward, we'll roll up. So push down into the shins, start to send the pelvis forward, letting one vertebra at a time stack coming to a high kneel and really try to melt this or milk this very slow stacking so you get the core work of articulating one vertebra at a time and take a moment just to pause at the top and imagine your shoulder girdle like shoulder pads that a football player would wear and try to feel those shoulder pads just resting totally square on the rib cage bring the hands to the hip creases that are actually should be pretty flat right here because we're kneeling um, flatten the tops of the feet keep shoulders hips and knees in a straight line and start to bend the knees to rock back for a psoas strengthener you don't have to go very far inhale back up and take a few of these on your own and feel the brightness underneath the fingertips just that natural tightening that occurs as the psoas engages and make sure as you rock back there's a feeling of being able to lengthen the low back so the tailbone is dropping and you're not feeling any pressure in the low back the spine stays completely neutral and now you can grab your two blocks place them starting at the highest height and step the right foot outside of the blocks the shoulders are over the wrists 
and the hands around the blocks and just start to draw some circles with the hips and then if you want more space for your circles you can try lowering the blocks you can try walking the front foot forward I also like to walk the front foot over to the right a little bit more and make sure that this is an exploration of feeling spacious right so we're not pushing into anything and feeling tight and feeling a stretch instead we're staying in that spacious awareness and even here maybe you can feel that triangle of the outer pinky down to the shoulder or up to the shoulder points and then down to the low back supporting you I like to feel the front edge of my body suctioning up into that back edge of the lats and this is when it really is that like flying squirrel moment where you're like catching the wind under your body try taking a heart breath and let the inner feeling of that breath inform the way you move right so if you're feeling anything gripping or tight let your heart breath help you release that doership walk the front foot in towards the blocks and slightly shorter if you lengthen tuck the back toes lift the back knee and start to reach out through the back heel push down into the blocks and if it feels comfortable you can reach the front knee forward and reach the back heel back but instead of trying to stretch try to feel how the legs are supporting the spot the pelvis lift the pelvis just an inch even as the knee and heel reach apart try doing some circles here you might feel like it's a little more strengthening if it's too much you can always put the back knee down and then release the back knee flatten the top of the back foot bring the blocks to the highest height walk them in a little bit walk the foot in push into the blocks and round the spine for cat pose and try to really get the cat from the low spine and not the upper spine right the upper spine naturally rounds more notice as you're focusing on the catting <laughs> of the low spine what core work has to happen and this is a lat stretch so you might feel a little bit of that tautness through the muscle we've been working with so much lengthen through the back of the neck and make sure you're um, you've still got space you can wiggle around here start to push the pelvis forward towards the blocks to slowly roll up one vertebra at a time take your time let the hands just float to the horizon and then just like we practiced before, shoulders, hips, and knee in a straight line, bend the back knee to rock back for that psoas strengthener. And so it's not a back bend, right? It should feel more like it's coming from, yeah, there you go. Try it on the exhale. The next time you rock back, if the body's craving it, you can start to reach the hands up and overhead. Imagine you're pulling that strap between the hands like we practiced before and hopefully all the work is coming from the back nice pujari i feel like your shoulders look a lot more spacious like yeah. yay and then release the hands down move the blocks forward we're going to do that one more time just so the body can relax into it so we'll start with those hip circles you can do whatever you want with the level of the blocks walking the foot forward letting your oh try going the opposite direction good for your brain see if you can still make it smooth and then tuck the back toes lift the back knee start to pull the back heel back and the front knee forward but as you do that lift the hips and notice how that integrates the body nice try doing the opposite way circling if you're like oh I don't remember which way I went I guarantee whatever way you automatically go is what you did the second time and so just reverse that and then set the back knee down lift the blocks walk everything in so you've got that nice short stance and then find your low back cat and then slowly roll up trying to feel how the legs are working together to support the pelvis 
pelvis is supporting the rib cage. And then with that rib cage supported, the shoulders are light bend, the elbows. Imagine you're going to catch like a big giant beach ball. And then try swinging a little bit from side to side. Yeah, the elbows can even hug in if it's too much to have the arms lifted. Start exploring twisting to the right. Try bending the right knee a little bit more. I know you're twisting away from me. And just notice the sensation in the left hip as that happens. Tuck the back toes under. Imagine that back knee lifting. We're not going to do that just yet, but just imagine being here. And then release the hands back down to center. Um, lift the back knee and turn all ten toes. And we're going to go all the way over to the other side. Big field trip here. Okay. So now the back knee lowers. And we'll start with our hip circles. Push evenly into both feet. So the left, the left foot should be in front this time. Push evenly into both feet and just notice a sense of support in the hips that allows you to move fluidly. And then tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, start to reach the front knee forward, back heel back, but lift the hips. And notice how the lifting of the hips draws the strength up the legs, up the spine, so you can feel the core working. Push the hands down, and maybe you can even feel that support into the lats and the front edge of the body can suction up to meet the back edge of the body. You can circle the hips if you like that. And then place the back knee down, flatten the top of the back foot. Take a moment to find your cat spine. And then send the hips forward to slowly roll up one vertebra at a time, as long as that feels safe. Hover the hands at the horizon. This first round, we just bend the right knee to rock backward. And it's way harder than with both legs, so be really compassionate. And then when you start to feel that strength and support, then you can play with lifting the arms, making sure the hands are nice and wide. Bend the elbows if you need to. You can imagine that invisible strap, like you're pulling the hands apart, like we practiced at the beginning. And then one more time, a little faster. So the hands release down. If the back knee is sore, try pushing into the back foot to unweight that knee a little bit. And it's going to strengthen the leg and strengthen the muscles around the knee. Opposite circle with the hips. And then tuck back toes, lift back knee. Take a moment in this lizard variation. Being really interested on how the legs can work together to support the spine. How fluidly and easily you can move here. Nice, Jay. That looks like really supported and creative. Set the back knee down, flatten the back foot, cat the spine. Remember, favor that low back. Notice how focusing on the low back allows the inner thighs to work together to support the pelvic floor. Push hips forward to slowly roll up. This time, if you want the hands to come beyond the horizon, you can can go right into Anjane Asana, or you can play with a rock back if that was useful to you. And then start to twist from side to side. And start to favor twisting to the left, so twisting towards that front knee. Tuck the back toes under and imagine the back knee lifting, even though we're not going there yet. Push a little extra into that front leg as you twist and try to feel how the rib cage twisting to the left interacts with that left hip, the outside of the left leg, what's happening in that spiral of the body. And then release the hands down, lift the back knee and walk the blocks and the toes all the way back the other way. Let's keep the legs lifted this time. Lift the back heel, bend the back knee, and climb the hands up the front thigh so you're standing in a high lunge. Soft elbows here, bend the back knee. 
Imagine that action. Um, so Pujari, uh, try a shorter stance at first and then you can go longer if you want to. Imagine that rock back action that we took, right? Try to feel that support here, right? That level of the psoas engaging. Big beach ball on the arms and then slowly start to lower the left knee as you twist to the right. So feel how that knee relates to the spiral. And then kick into both feet, turn them towards me, reach up into a big star. You can move your blocks out of the way and then we're gonna go the other way. So lift the right heel, turn the toes over to the left, walk that foot in any amount that you need to, soft arms, and then as you dip the right knee, spiral to the left. Take a breath here and bounce, making sure your joints feel really supple. Nice, Kirtana. And then kick into the feet, open to star. And now that you know where we're going, explore on your own. It can be nice and slow or it can be one breath per movement. So it could be an exhale into the atlas twist, inhale into star, exhale the other way. And try to be as soft as possible with the shoulders. They can even come out more to a T if that feels um, like more watery and fluid or you can let them release completely oh and then it's kind of almost like you're a bowler like the arm like swings <laughs> back a little bit and let the movement start at the feet but try to feel how the deep core work is uniting your limbs and how the arms just swing and follow effortlessly like you don't even have to think about them they're just following the body and if you want to stay anywhere and pause you can or just take a couple more rounds trying to feel the unity from the feet all the way up to the shoulders all the way up to the crown of the head and then let's all meet and star but release the arms down Close the eyes, bring the awareness to the heart, and take a heart breath. And just notice of if that energetic spaciousness has become more real in your body. If you can feel it through all of the joints, especially the shoulders. And let's grab our blocks and place them in front of us. And turn all ten toes towards me if they're not already making the outer edges of the feet parallel. Anchor the big toes, but then um, suction the outer edges of the feet down so that the legs slightly spiral and the pelvis, the thigh bones anchor and the hip socket. See if that can help you stand up a little taller. Take some really tiny hip circles and just notice how the activity of the legs w interacts with this movement of the hips. You might feel a little more awareness in the arches of the feet at certain aspects of this hip circle. You might feel the muscles in the lateral line of the body engage. And then imagine you've got two big heavy rubber bands attached to the ankles. Start to pull them forward and up and feel that work that it takes to reach them forward and up. Maybe that, that work can translate through the front of the body feeling strong and lengthened. Take a breath. And then as you exhale, bend the knees and allow the whole body to melt forward. Allow that um, contraction to pull the body forward. Hands come to the blocks. And then shift the weight forward into the blocks and just take a few circles of the shoulders over the wrists. You can play with walking the hands further forward, almost like a down dog, a wide legged down dog. Um, I think this feels really, really nice because there's way less effort in the upper body than when the hands are on the ground. You can sway the hips a little from side to side, exploring that big triangle that we've been playing with from the pinkies to the low back. 
And just notice how the pushing into the hands helps you lift and lengthen the hips up and back. And then eventually shift the weight forward so you can lower one knee at a time coming into tabletop. And then we're going to do one last thing for our shoulders. And I want to demo it first. So you can tuck the toes under and sit kneeling. If that's too intense for the feet, you can flatten them out. Um, but most of us benefit from stretching the feet a little bit. So you're going to roll up your extra blanket in a moment. And we're going to do um, just one down dog. And then we'll play with rolling forward like we did before, except this time we'll drop the knees and then the blanket catches the upper thighs so that we can be really relaxed here as we let the thighs melt into the blanket and we play with gently lengthening through the front of the body. And if that doesn't look inviting, you can do down dog and then you can lower the body and instead of coming into up dog, you can let one or both legs lift on the blanket so you get your back bend um, from the bottom up. Um, so roll up your blanket. We'll meet in tabletop with the hands, one hand print forward. Tuck the toes, hover the knees, and then start to push into the hands to reach the hips up and back just like we've been practicing, lengthening that triangle. Keep the knees deeply bent. Sway the hips a little bit. And then start to kick into the balls of the feet, rounding forward, just like cat pose favor, that low back as you round, coming into a puffy plank, lower the knees, and then let the thighs start to melt into your blanket. And then as the thighs press into the blanket, drag the hands back and wide, and see if that can help you open through the front of the body. <gasps> that looks so nice, Pujari. Bend the elbows a little bit and just make sure you can move the neck around. There's no tension in the shoulders. And then flatten the tops of the feet. Hips come to the heels. Move your blanket forward so you can melt your forehead onto it. If that felt useful and your body wants to do it again, you're welcome to. But for me, it feels like time to rest. And then... Let the pelvis get heavy. Let the low back lengthen. If this isn't a comfortable resting position, please come into anything that feels more comfortable for you. And then tent the fingertips. Walk the hands in and slowly roll up one vertebra at a time so you're seated on the heels and again let the rib cage eventually support the shoulder girdle and and notice where it has landed notice a feeling of space across the chest across the back body and then um, just for fun, we'll revisit where we began, sitting in whatever comfortable seated position. Start to explore your neck. And something that I notice right away, it's almost like I feel like my, my head is anchored all the way down to my core instead of feeling it so much just above my shoulders. It's almost like my head is a lollipop and I can feel like the support of the stick all the way down. And maybe remeasure or just take in the quality of your movement. And then come back to center and let the head just be weightless. Take a heart breath. And we have enough time for a restorative pose. Um, so take your folded up blanket and place it um, away from you. And we'll actually need an additional blanket to make this just a little bit bigger so I can um, 
pass these out. Um, 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 I don't know. I'll just fold this up really quick. Um, so, we're going to be doing a restorative fish pose. So, a really gentle back bend um, where the chest can open and the shoulders can really relax. I like the second blanket so that um, the bolster is a little bit bigger and the low back has extra support. Um, I also need the support for the base of my skull. So let me demonstrate what's going to happen before you do it. Um, there's a little bit of a stagger where the top blanket comes over the edge of the bottom blanket so that the slope is a little more gradual for the low back. And then fold over the blanket so that you get support through the base of the skull. You want the back of the neck to feel really long here. It's a very gentle back bend. So my experience is it doesn't feel like really a big stretch it's pretty subtle and that and that's what we want so that we can feel really safe and relaxed and so take your time wiggle around it can even be handy to have an extra pillow or blanket for the head just to make sure you have enough support there um, and then different leg options or I'll, I'll let everyone get settled um, Tuck the chin. Hmm. Trying to get like is that. So legs can extend like Shavasana, or feet can go wide and knees can knock in like we did at the beginning of class. Um, if you do Baddha Konasana, I recommend supporting the outer legs to not put um, pressure in the hip sockets. So like a couple blocks outside of the knees can feel really nice there. And then just make sure the arms feel supported. There's no pressure, the arm bone resting in the shoulder socket. Take some breaths to shine awareness through the spine. We want the lengthening of the spine to feel really even and spacious, just like we've been practicing in all of our poses today. Make sure the neck feels happy and the front and the back of the throat are open. Let the breath be natural, but try to feel how the back of the rib cage interacts with your shoulders and your props. And then close the mouth if you can. Take a couple of heart breaths to set the stage. And then let yourself relax completely.
Observe your next couple of breaths. If your legs are not already extended, take your time extending them out. And then interlace the hands at the occiput and squeeze the elbows together. Gently lengthen through the back of the neck, tucking the chin. Start to bring the right knee in towards the chest and curl up like apanasana. And then staying in apanasana, lift the left leg and drop the left leg to the ground to roll all the way up. Slowly start to rotate to the right and let the whole left side of the body lengthen. And we'll try that again. So push into the left leg to slowly lengthen back down. Keep supporting your head. Um, you can allow the body to relax for a moment if that feels good. And then curl the head up, squeeze the knee in, lift the left leg and then drop it down and notice how it just rocks you naturally forward and you can take that momentum to gently rotate. And then we'll do the other side. So the next time you recline, swap the legs. Recline for as long as you want, but then when you're ready, curl up. So first the top of the body engages and then bring the left knee in. Drop the right leg to roll up and gently rotate to the left. So towards that bent knee. And you can do one more on your own or stay up if that feels better to you. And slowly come up to neutral and extend the legs into Dandasana and just pause and let yourself be. And then you can start to prepare for Shavasana. So if you need any warm layers or to change the lighting in your room, you can use um, one of those blankets underneath your knees. The second blanket can be really fun Actually, because we did a shoulders class, we can do the second blanket as a headrest. Um, so you can fold the blanket in half, kind of like that standard yoga blanket size that you might kneel on. Um, but then take the top half, pull it a little longer and start to roll it up. This is going to cradle your head. I'll move everything out of the way because this is a little bit tricky. Um, so other way um, so that you can fold the sh the longer edge. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then once you have the roll, take the two edges of the roll. This is the magic part. Um, and then fold them underneath. And it's going to create a bigger support for the neck and then two little edges to cradle the sides of the head. So yes, you got it. Roll that up a couple of times and then pull it down so you've got some more real estate. Now grab the two edges and tuck the other way. Yes, great, you got it. Um, and so if you did it right, it should be kind of like a massage table where you've got like almost like a U shape and the way that you use it is the neck comes over the roll and you get a lot of support for your head and you might need to wiggle around a little bit um, but it should feel like the front and the back of the throat are nice and long and that the head is supported from left and right so it's not going to roll to the side and I can't quite see people on lines headrest so if you need me to demo that again I'm happy to And then as long as you feel supported, as long as you feel safe, whatever you've done is perfect. And let your body find stillness. And then start to explore the heart breath.
and notice if it's become more real for you the spaciousness possible the focus ability to relax and drop into these deeper layers inside of ourself and you can keep your focal point at the heart as you relax just like that expansive inhale as we release in Shavasana um, we spread out almost as if our atoms aren't held together so tightly and so let yourself relax and become spacious while maintaining that gentle anchor at the center of it all the heart center and we'll rest here now
Just observe your body and resist any urge to rush. And let the process of awakening unfold first with the breath. And then gentle movements and eventually exploration, enjoying the space you've created, enjoying the state of being you've dropped into and take your time let the process unfold and then eventually you can make your way up to seated but take the scenic route And take the time to support your body for meditation, grabbing whatever you need, even if it's annoying to go get the thing, it's worth it. And eventually we'll find our meditation seat and imagine that your body is brand new and some ways it is it's changed it's reset let yourself find your meditation seat for the first time not assuming anything about what it should look like and then notice from the beginning of class when we began seated notice any support that you've built with your awareness with your physical work but also this deeper consciousness of allowing the body to support itself notice the sensation through the spine Notice if the head feels any lighter. And notice how the shoulders are resting on the rib cage. Notice if your breath is more easeful. A lot of times when our neck and shoulders are tight, we actually use those tight muscles to participate in breathing. And so just feel with anything that has released. And then eventually, once you've explored the physical body, you can let your awareness rest at the center point of the heart. And observe the natural ebb and flow of the breath without altering it. It's like watching the waves lap up on the shore of the beach and then recede. And 
prioritizing this lack of doership, feel the qualities that we've been exploring in the heart breath. Feel the true spaciousness that's available when we allow the breath instead of taking it. And though you can become very spacious, it's not imbalancing or scary or ungrounding because you have this anchor in the center of the heart. And so you can feel fully supported fully present while allowing the physical body to relax very deeply, allowing the mind to be quiet. And starting to experience your true nature, which is supremely spacious.
can bring hands gently to the heart center and feel how balanced the arms are and the, the grasping that we normally do with the hands can release fully from the source. Mm. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Namaste. Mm. Mm. So great to see you all. Hope your body, mind, and spirit feel loved and supported. Enjoy the rest of your evening or day and see you soon. And Rise Training starts Friday, so if you love exploring your shoulders and your core and you want more, be there. I'll be there. Kirtana will be there. Maybe my mom will be there. <laughs> Good night. I love you. Good night, Mom. Love you. Bye, Jay. See you Saturday.